Hi, I'm Panos and in this talk I will briefly present our joint work named Artemis, Affective Language for Visual Art. Our work makes three key contributions. First, it introduces the problem of deep learning affective explanations. Second, it publishes a dataset to facilitate solutions towards this problem. And third, it establishes the first neural speakers that explain affect. To create our dataset, we saw human annotators, famous works of art, and asked them two questions. First, to indicate their dominant emotion upon observing a displayed artwork, and then, and crucially, to also provide a written explanation about why they felt that way. By recruiting thousands of annotators living in countries where English is the main spoken language, we collected hundreds of thousands of affective responses covering 80,000 artworks of the WikiArt dataset. In our study, we use images of art because unlike random imagery, art is created with the intent of triggering emotions. Moreover, by annotating the entire WikiArt dataset, we cover a variety of themes, ranging from depictions of still life to modern abstract paintings. Our collected explanations are different from established captioning data, as they are rich in abstract, metaphorical and even imaginative content. These are examples containing the word bird from Artemis and Coco. First, each of our captions explains a dominant emotion. As we see, not all grounding images contain birds. The shape of the moustache and of the abstract painting actually resemble flying birds. Or this woman who appears to be of higher social status but also looks sad like a bird in a golden cage. Last but not least, Birds can bring hope or be cuddled in a calm and awe-inspiring way. With Artemis, we embrace open-ended explanations and the subjectivity that comes along with different individuals. For instance, the moonlight of this painting can be interpreted as a source of safety or as a culprit for an eerie feeling. Despite this intrinsic subjectivity, remarkably, 97.5% of the time, a second judging human finds an Artemis explanation to be reasonable, even when themselves would react differently. In other words, there is significant common ground behind our task, which is crucial for deep learning it. Before we move on to our learning-based experiments, we note that the ground truth distribution of elicited emotions is highly skewed towards positive emotions such as amusement or excitement. It is also worth noting that brighter color stimuli and natural landscapes in particular are highly more likely to produce a positive reaction than darker color or sadder content-based themes. Moving on to our first simple learning task, we know that for 45.6% of artworks, the majority of their annotators selected the same fine-grained emotion. A ResNet-based architecture can learn to find those majority-supported emotions about 60% of the time. We also attempt to learn the underlying emotion supported by a given textual explanation. This is not an easy task, as these two examples demonstrate, since many times the language used is also subjective or very subtle. Despite this hardness, an LSTM-based text classifier guesses the correct emotion about 63% of the time. More importantly, when we bannerize its predicted output into positive and negative emotion predictions, the corresponding accuracy goes to 90%, indicating a graceful failing mode. Moving to our main application of affective neural speakers, we establish several baselines. Specifically, we try two rudimentary ones, one that copies an explanation from the training set for a test input image by relying on image-based nearest neighbors, and a second one that uses adjective noun pairs with known sentiment and taps into neural speakers trained with descriptive data like COCO. We also apply a classic so attend and tell architecture trained explicitly with Artemis data and a more recent bottom-up top-down transformer-based model that relies further on input bounding boxes of objects. These are output predictions from so attend and tell and demonstrate the ability of the neural speaker to generalize into nuanced explanations like finding a drawn face to be funny or a landscape's greenery to provoke a meditative mood. The same model can create visuolinguistic metaphors, like support the feeling of fear due to the sky's color looking like boiling fire. 
finally, we aim at grasping some course level control over Artemis subjectivity. Specifically, during training, we augment the input to a neural speaker to include the emotion labels used to create a corresponding textual explanation. At test time, this enables us to sample different emotions for a given image and create distinct explanations. Like in this case, where we ground the speaker with a positive emotion of contentment or with sadness and observe drastically different but reasonable output explanations. These are more examples where the emotion grounded speaker uses the first or second most likely emotion predicted by a separately trained image to emotion classifier. The summarized quantitative analysis between our different neural speakers reveals the following facts. First, training with Artemis is necessary to create plausible explanations and simple or surrogate variants relying on descriptive data did not fare well. However, we also identify that standard captioning metrics only tell parts of this story and are not perfectly suited for datasets with great variants or subjectivity like Artemis. That is why we introduce two metrics more tailored to our dataset. According to those two, the emotion grounded variants capture better the expected emotion of the majority of our annotators and also create a more appropriate number of metaphors and similes. Last, it is worth noting that these variants fare much better in a Turing test where participants were asked to spot if an explanation was made by a human or not. In this test, about 50% of the neural based explanations were on par with human made ones. Despite our initial success in this problem, much future work is needed. From metrics better reflecting subjective data, to methods that avoid mode collapse and better capture the amazing breadth of human imagination and emotional processes. For more details, including all data and code used for this project, please visit the project's webpage. Thanks for listening!